how meiosis creates variation. Here are some of the questions we'll be addressing. What are the two ways that meiosis generates variation? Explain independent assortment. Explain synapsis and crossing over. I'm Mr. W from learn-biology.com, where we believe that interaction and feedback is what leads to deep, substantial learning. We're so sure of that, that we provide a money-back guarantee that comes with your subscription. What are the two ways that meiosis generates diversity? They're shown here. The first is independent assortment. The second is crossing over and genetic recombination. We'll explain both of those now. Explain what independent assortment is and how it generates genetic diversity. Note that the phases of mitosis and meiosis have the same names, the same designations. But because there are two cell divisions in meiosis, we have to give them a kind of suffix. So in meiosis, there's interphase one, followed by prophase one, metaphase one, etc. Then there's a cytokinesis interphase two, followed by a prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, etc. The reason why that's important is because the events that we're going to talk about happen in between prophase one and metaphase one. That's where independent assortment really takes place. What happens is that during prophase one, homologous pairs pair up. And if you think about that, it's quite poignant and extraordinary. In the adult organism who's undergoing meiosis, the chromosomal parents wind up finding each other. And what I mean by that is that in the germ cells of an organism doing meiosis, the mother and the father's chromosome number one will find one another, and I'm not kidding, they actually embrace. And chromosome two does that, chromosome three does that. All those chromosomes find one another and embrace one another. During metaphase one, they're pulled by spindle fibers, just as happens in mitosis, to the cell equator, right? So here we have that. But the way that each pair gets dragged to the middle is independent of every other pair. So in this very simplified system, it's possible that the paternal chromosomes might be on the left side and the maternal ones might be on the right side. It's equally possible that you could have this arrangement versus this arrangement, whereas you have paternal chromosome one on the left, maternal chromosome one on the right, whereas maternal chromosome two is on the left and paternal chromosome two is on the right. It's as random as flipping a coin, and that randomness is essential. What happens is that with two homologous pairs, four different chromosome arrangements are possible. That's two squared in the gametes. In other words, what we're gonna do now during anaphase is we're going to pull these homologous pairs apart. So one possible arrangement is like this. And then in the gamete, we have paternal chromosome one, paternal chromosome two. And in this gamete, we have maternal chromosome one, maternal chromosome two. And if the chromosomes are organized like this, then this gamete can have paternal chromosome one, paternal chromosome two. And this gamete can have maternal chromosome one and paternal chromosome two. Now, you can play around with this. You can make cut out little pieces, or you can label coins M1, P1, M2, P2, and you can try different combinations, but you won't get more than four in a system that has four chromosomes as its diploid number. With three homologous pairs, then the math takes you to two cubed. That's eight possible arrangements. And with 23 pairs, like we have in Homo sapiens, you have two to the 23rd possible arrangements. That's 8,388,608 possible combinations. That's the chance that any two sperm cells or any two egg cells would have exactly the same array of maternal and paternal chromosomes. So what's the chance that you and a sibling would have the same chromosomal inheritance? In other words, you'd inherit the same array of chromosomes in your dad's sperm and the same array in your mom's egg. Well, those are independent events. So the same egg, it's one over 23. The same sperm, it's one over 23. You multiply those two together and that's one in 70 trillion. 
You ever wonder why you're different from your siblings? This is only one of the reasons why. That's why meiosis is so phenomenal. So this is independent assortment. What every chromosome does is independent of every other chromosome pair, and that creates tremendous diversity in the offspring. Are you asking yourself, how am I going to get a four or a five on the AP bio exam? It's a good question because it's a hard test, but we have a plan for your success. Go to learn-biology.com, sign up for a free trial, and complete our interactive tutorials and interactive AP bio exam reviews. We guarantee you a four or a five on the AP bio exam. See you on learn-biology.com. Independent assortment is a phenomenal engine for creating diversity, but there's yet another one in meiosis. That's crossing over. What is crossing over and how does it create variation? When those homologous pairs pair up during prophase one, they don't only embrace, they embrace in such an intense way that they actually exchange parts. So this embrace is called synapsis, and at a point called a chiasma, segments of DNA will move from one homolog to the other. The result is that you start like this. This array of four sister chromatids is called a tetrad, four tetrad. And so this is what it's like before crossing over, and then after crossing over, it's like this. Well, you'll notice this isn't really a maternal chromosome anymore. It's a maternal chromosome with a paternal piece, and the same thing for this one. So crossing over creates what's called recombinant chromosomes, and these have unique and novel sequences of DNA. How does sexual reproduction create diversity? One engine for diversity is independent assortment and how it randomly arrays different combinations of chromosomes in the gametes. The other engine is crossing over and genetic recombination, which creates uniquely recombinant chromosomes. And then finally, there's fertilization, where the sperm and egg from different individuals combine in a fertilized egg. And that is the third generator. And that's why sexual reproduction creates diversity. It explains you, it explains me, Biology, is it amazing or what? Want to learn more? Sign up for a free trial of the website that guarantees your AP Biology success. Learn-biology.com and watch this next video.